and an ever-present faint fishiness. Ugh, God. Anchovies. Why? Anchovies! Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. I implore you to go ahead and look it up. You know, on your own time, whenever you got some time. <laughs> Today we are jumping back into r slash neckbeard stories with another tale from user Madame Macabre. This will basically wrap up her entire post history, which I'm at least partially satisfied about. <laughs> That's right, if you couldn't guess from the titles, this is the Miss Piggy Chronicles. I'm sure it's going to be full of delicious, well, legbeard cringe, <laughs> I suppose. And you know I got some proclivities towards them legbeard tales. So without any further delay, let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will jump into the Miss Piggy Chronicles. The Miss Piggy Chronicles. Wolfbeard Expanded Universe. Whoa! That makes it sound awesome. Like, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but, you know, beardier. <laughs> Hello again, everyone. It's been a little while since I've written anything for you. Many apologies, but life is busy and full of other obligations. However, I'm happy to bring you the first entry to my next saga right now. When the Wolfbeard saga ended, many of you still had a lot of questions left unanswered, not to mention all of the teasing that I did in regards to the deeper, darker truth behind Miss Piggy. Well, fret not. Today we'll be picking back up with our good friends Piggy and Wolfbeard, as the antics are far from over. <laughs> Prepare yourself. If you thought Wolfbeard was bad, get ready for his female counterpart. Now, those of you that have already made it through the Wolfbeard saga are already quite familiar with Miss Piggy and the circumstances under which she was a part of my life, but I will offer a brief recap for those choosing to start the adventure here, Though I would recommend starting from the top. That link is in the description. It's a two hour video, quite beefy, but if you got the time, then stop on by. It's a good listen. Hello, and welcome new adventurers. This saga is a wild one that'll follow a cast of multiple characters through many dramatic twists and turns, and things will get pretty bumpy with the secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> That's what we live for. So please fasten your seatbelts. Keep your arms and legs safely inside the vehicles, and enjoy the ride. Remain seated, please. Sierra de Santos, por favor. Ah, first up, we have the star of the show, Miss Piggy herself. Your classical leg beard, minus the SJW leanings and hyper-feministic viewpoints. Pretty much a classic neck beard model, but gender swapped. <laughs> Not obese in form but quite literally breaking the scale into the medical category of super morbidly obese. <laughs> if one commonly refers to women's body shapes as vegetation, such as pears, strawberries, or apples, Miss Piggy would be the farmer's prized pumpkin. <laughs> Gonna roll her down to the fair. And I mean no disrespect to the thick chicks out there. You work your stuff, boo-boo. But Miss Piggy was not what one would refer to as voluptuous. Okay, sure, she had a big old booty, but it wasn't poppin', as they say. It was squashed flat from excessive sitting to the point where it had almost recessed back into her body. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, Hank Hill, or better yet, a crack in an egg. <laughs> and there you have Miss Piggy's rear. God, that's horrifying. <laughs> Although her derriere sank inwards most unimpressively, she did indeed have some massive knockers. <laughs> knockers. Ah, uh, believe me, she knew, and she would go on and on about them, as if trying to make me feel bad and poorly endowed, at a D. Like, okay girl, flaunt your double H's. But the thing is, and I really hate to break the news to you, sweetie, but big old boobers don't have quite the same effect of attraction when your gut sticks out farther than they do, and your back has cleavage nearly as big as the front. <laughs> this is getting so catty already, dude. I'm living for it. 
Ah, uh, see, she she acknowledged it. Oh dear, here I go getting catty. <laughs> My apologies. I tend to not let myself get into the classic bitchy mode, but by the time we get to the end of this saga and everything Miss Piggy did, you'll understand my powerful saltiness and probably think that I should take my cattiness even further. But I digress. Though not looming with the same powerful body odor that typical neckbeard sport, Miss Piggy did have her own special odor. <laughs> A faint whiff of garbage from the hoarder's den that was her living quarters, and an ever-present faint fishiness. Ugh, God, that's good cringe. She had mousy brown shoulder-length hair, which always frizzed slightly from lack of proper maintenance, and these massive frickin' eyeballs. No, not like the cute anime-esque or doll-like large eyes. I mean, just like huge frickin' eyeballs. <laughs> They practically seemed to pop out of her head like a frog or something. She could do these freaky crazy expressions because they were so huge, and she could open them ungodly wide. And of course, because she almost never wore makeup, until she started trying to mimic my look later, but that's a later story that you can check out in the Wolfbeard Saga, she was just shit at it whenever she tried it. Well, OP, makeup ain't for everybody, but it does sound like this chick could benefit from, uh, at least a little bit. <laughs> Basically, in summation, she put in the absolute minimum baseline effort to both her hygiene and appearance. She preferred to save money for food. And no, I'm not just making a fat joke at her expense. I am dead serious. This bitch would spend like 200 to $300 a month on snacks. That's not even counting actual groceries. Miss Piggy was really weird about money. But that's a major part of the story that we'll get into later. Anyways, along with all of this, Miss Piggy was a super weeaboo. The focal points of her life were anime, fantasy, and Wolfbeard. Speaking of Wolfbeard, he's the next colorful character in our cast. He's a 6 foot 2 tower of obese body odor, <laughs> with sandy blonde hair and facial hair that was styled not unlike a sad Shaggy from Scooby-Doo that tragically just let himself go. <laughs> yeah, boy, once Shaggy stopped running away from all those ghosts and ghouls, <laughs> kept on eating them sandwiches, and this is the result. <laughs> he always dressed in a filthy golf hat and a shirt depicting wolves howling. For a proper understanding of this absolute treat of a human being, I highly suggest reading the Wolfbeard Saga if you haven't already. But basically, Wolfbeard is connected to this story via Miss Piggy, as he was her fiancé for a time. Despite this, he was a mega creeper to all females in his proximity. Talk about a total dream couple, these two. <laughs> imagine if they had a kid. No, don't imagine that. It's too horrifying. <laughs> and then you have me. Once again, I'll go by my D&D moniker, Calamity. I'm a tall, slender alternative chick, hovering arguably somewhere between 90s and new goth. Morticia Adams is my life goals. Anyway, so basically, having nothing in common with these two. <laughs> and you may be wondering, Hey Calamity, why the heck would you even associate with these folks? And though I understand the confusion, let me give you new readers a quick rundown of what was covered in the Wolfbeard Saga. To surmise, I'd been close childhood friends with Miss Piggy through grade school. I knew her since kindergarten, and in those wee years, she was quite different. Despite a slight awkwardness that could be entirely natural for a child, she was very sweet and normal. She was also nearly the same build as myself in those years, being taller than average and rather slim. The last time I saw her in person in the 7th grade, this was still the case. Things didn't begin to change drastically with Miss Piggy until after I moved away. Naturally, we grew apart during these years and lost contact. However, while attending college, I reached out to reconnect, missing my old friend. It was an enormous shock to my system when I finally met her in person again after all those years and saw the metamorphosis that she had undergone in my absence. <laughs> that being said, I did still want to get to know her again. At the time, her new appearance and occasionally cringy behaviors weren't enough to off-put me from reconnecting. At the surface, she still seemed to be the same kind and funny girl that I remembered, so I chose to stick around. For the first few months of getting to know Miss Piggy again, she was living in a small hoarder's den of a one-bedroom apartment 
with her fiancé at the time, Wolfbeard. For the sake of this new saga, we're flying past all those months in the brand new territory beyond. If you haven't already, please check out the original Wolfbeard saga to get up to speed on all the crap that happened during that turbulent window if you're interested. But for everyone else, let's dive on in, shall we? God, that's like endless plugging of the Wolfbeard saga in the intro. <laughs> I thought I was bad with the self-promo, bro. Chill it. <laughs> No, but seriously, the link is in the description if you if you want to check it out. <laughs> ah, anyways. <laughs> so after a long series of wild events where Wolfbeard made all of Miss Piggy's friends very uncomfortable and then tried to turn my friends against me for having the audacity to reject his nasty and engaged ass, his web tangled and imploded. Miss Piggy called off the engagement and they were supposedly done with one another. I say supposedly because it wasn't until near the end of Miss Piggy's own saga that I learned that things weren't so cut and dry as that, but we'll get to that with time. Anyways, since Miss Piggy and Wolfbeard were supposedly no longer together, Wolfbeard sort of moved back home with his parents. In reality, he still spent almost every waking moment at that apartment, over half of his belongings still remained, and for the remainder of the lease, Miss Piggy seemingly had no problem with his constant presence. The only exception being when Miss Piggy had friends over, who had been involved in the past fiasco, as literally every one of us flat out refused to go anywhere near her place if Wolfbeard would be around. Begrudgingly, she accepted, although she'd always try to guilt us about it. If you guys would just give him a chance to apologize, it wouldn't have to be like this. He feels so badly about what he's done and he just wants to make it better. Of course, we'd always wave this away, well aware that the only thing Wolfbeard regretted was not keeping his lies in well enough order to get away with it. But regardless of Miss Piggy's quite irritating need to defend Wolfbeard, we managed to compartmentalize it under the annoying quirks that we're willing to live with, I guess, folder. <laughs> and keep on with our friendship with her. Looking back on it, Miss Piggy had a lot of these irritating quirks, many of which we later learn went much deeper than just quirks and into actual toxic behaviors. See, the way I've always looked at relationships and friendships alike is as a form of give and take. No friendship will be perfect. Everyone has their own little quirks. Everyone. And a successful friendship will rely on finding others that are compatible with your quirks, for example, I know I have a problem with bottling things up. I'll take a lot of crap for a long time and just bite my tongue and silently deal with it. However, once I've hit my capacity for bullshit, I explode. And all of my bottled up frustration can come pouring out in one epic overreaction. Refer to my verbal evisceration of Wolfbeard at the lake. I know it's bad, and I am trying to work on better communicating my feelings earlier on to avoid this kind of emotional backup, but... It's a struggle, and I know it's a quirk that others may find to just be too much. But my friends are those who can handle this quirk. They were able to be calm and cool-headed when I blow my top, so they quickly de-escalate a situation, and it's no harm, no foul. Or there's Lilith, who gets just as spicy alongside me in a fraction of a second, and we end up tag-teaming the poor target with a verbal suplex city from hell. And then it's up to Doe to desperately attempt to wrangle the livid she-dragons, Bless you, Doe. Overall, they find that they get more positive out of the relationship than the negative of dealing with my quirk, so in the end, it's a successful friendship. Somebody needs to make a math formula for that. <laughs> That's science. <laughs> <laughs> Things start to go awry when the balance of give and take is disrupted. If your friend has a quirk, or in Miss Piggy's case, multiple quirks that are hard for you to cope with, and you find yourself not getting enough return, support, solidarity, and joy from the friendship to keep the relationship firmly planted on the positive side of the scale, then it's doomed to fall apart. Friendships and romantic relationships that drain you more than they fulfill you are never worth the time and effort unless both sides accept responsibility and work to change. And more often than not, the more toxic the person, the less willing they are to change their ways. Go figure. <laughs> Anyways, I went on that whole side tirade to sort of set up the context that you'll need to understand the full descent and destruction of Miss Piggy's friendships with myself 
and our mutual friends. It was a slow burn of building quirks and decaying positive net gains, followed by one massive betrayal that sealed the deal in the death of this friendship. And ultimately, this was how she went from our lovingly nicknamed Min to our manipulative ex-friend, Miss Piggy. The first of her deadly sins that damned her friendships was Sloth. Miss Piggy struggled with this one since childhood. You could say that this was her original quirk. Even back when I still lived near her and was her childhood best friend, she struggled with this. To put it bluntly, the woman is just an absolute slob. I have vivid memories of going to spend the night at her house as a kid and how her room was just always a wreck. And not just your normal messy kids room. I mean straight up Hoarders Jr. kind of wreck. <laughs> Porter's Jr. <laughs> Despite having a perfectly functional closet and a chest of dresser drawers, I don't think her clothing ever rested anywhere but the floor. Her mountain of filthy stuffed animals was often mixed in among them, along with any other toys and belongings that she had. The only saving grace was that her mother did not allow her to eat in her room. So at this point in time, there was no rotting food or garbage mixed in. Well, I'm sure there was a reason that that rule was implemented. <laughs> it's a good rule, though. All that hardly mattered, as despite this, the smell of cat piss and the general stench of poor hygiene was deeply permeated into the very walls of that room. Ugh. That's horrifying. For a child to live in there? That, that is so sad. It all starts with the parents, bro, I'm telling you. Ugh, what really irritated me, and was practically another quirk on its own, was how she used her friends to get around her own slothfulness. You see, even as a wee ten-year-old, whenever I'd go visit, somehow I'd always find myself cleaning her room for her. There was a combination of tactics behind how she accomplished this. For one, even as a little kid, the idea of sleeping in filth piles disturbed me. <laughs> As well it should, especially since the family had a bunch of stinky dogs that they'd let run in and out of the house all day long, covered in mud and untreated fleas which inevitably found itself in the piles. I'm sorry, but sleeping with a flea-infested, wet dog stinking pile of dirty shirts and plushies is a waking nightmare of mine. <laughs> so rather than just accept this fate, I'd take Miss Piggy up on her offer to help clean her room. I say that in quotes because when one agreed to help Miss Piggy, it basically meant doing all of the work alone while she lounged about and chatted you up. Another tactic in her arsenal was the blame game. She'd blame her younger siblings for messing her things up and that it wasn't her fault and that she despised living in filth, but it just couldn't be helped. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever I, or any other friends that she suckered into helping, asked why she hadn't just tidied it up herself, she'd hit us with the lamest excuse I've ever heard to this day. I can't clean when I'm alone. It's too boring. It's much easier when I have company helping me so I have someone to talk to. Sure, girl. It's got nothing to do with you wanting someone to clean up for you while you lounge on your fat ass, right? <laughs> this girl's doing some massive mental gymnastics to convince herself that people can't see through this bullshit, man. That is a horribly lame excuse. <laughs> Either that or she just doesn't give a shit. She's like, whatever. People are doing my work for me good. Anyways, this habit only grew with time. By the time she was grown and in her first apartment with Wolfbeard, she was practically a full-on hoarder, complete with stinking piles of rotted food and stinking garbage. Ugh. And guess what other behavior she continued? Ding, ding, ding! That's right! She still expected her visitors, her freaking guests, to clean her home when they visited. Ugh. Now mind you, she'd never come right out and demand that you clean for her and her slob of a fiancé, but she would pile on the pity real thick and slowly build to it. <laughs> Guests visibly uncomfortable with the state of the apartment better start commenting about how you're so embarrassed about the state of things, but both your and Wolfbeard's back are so bad and it's difficult to clean properly. Wouldn't an angel of mercy offering to help tidy up the place be a godsend? <laughs> 
Well, luckily you have a circle of friends that's too nice to tell you to just fuck off, I guess. <laughs> Mind you, she was never able to weasel me into cleaning anything more than the sitting room and the kitchen, but damn, some friends have told me absolute horror stories when they helped with the bedroom and bathroom. Oh, God. <laughs> I won't gross you out with the full spectrum, but let's just say that despite knowing company was coming over, Wolfbeard didn't think it necessary to flush a rather gruesome deposit before the maid, <clears throat> I mean guest, was made to go attempt to tidy the bathroom. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And you know that shit had to be horrible because he's a werewolf, and werewolves eat a lot of red meat. <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> Sorry to leave you with that lovely mental image, but you get the picture. Anyways, the task that Miss Piggy came to associate with me was being her own personal dishwasher, and I will admit that this was probably partially my own fault. Takes two to tango, OP. There had been a time or two early on when it came to be dinner time and there were just no clean dishes in the entire apartment, or just in general I was so filled with disgust at the state of the enormous mountain of filthy rotten dishes that I couldn't stand the sight or smell any further and just started washing them myself. What's worse is that she didn't even have an actual dishwasher, so I just have to take it all on by hand. Christ, you're a braver person than me. <laughs> I'd have brought over a stack of paper plates, and I wouldn't leave the paper plates with them neither. <laughs> Maybe that'll motivate him to clean something. Or just, you know, eat macaroni out of the pot like an animal, standing over the kitchen sink. <laughs> Which is probably exactly what happened. Well, as a result of this, from that day forward, she basically began to expect me to continue washing her dishes every time that I visit her. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this. No joke, every single time that I visited her, I'd walk into the filthy apartment and spot the stinking mountain of soiled dishes, and she'd remain beached on her sunken spot on the couch and begin giving me an ever-expectant look, all but motioning to the pile with her eyes. If I didn't immediately offer to start cleaning up, she'd start to sigh and begin to make ever so sad comments about how she wished the dishes were clean, but she's just so exhausted from work that she couldn't bear to do it. <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> my options were to either get up and power through it, which although both not my responsibility and disgusting would only take me a short while, after which I could enjoy the rest of my visit in peace, or I would be forced to spend the next unforeseeable amount of time trying to ignore her incessant sighs and pathetic comments, slowly whittling away at my sanity. I realize in hindsight that the proper choice was to tell her that I wasn't her maid, and I worked too but still had time to do my own fucking dishes and take care of my responsibilities, so she had no excuse and was simply lazy. But hey... Back at the time, I was younger and a lot easier to manipulate, especially since I was wearing some serious nostalgia glasses when it came to Miss Piggy. I wanted so badly to make our old friendship work again that I intentionally ignored or excused so many things, and I wasn't alone. A lot of our mutual friends also took issue with these things, but we all just sort of excused it. Anyway, this slothfulness never left her. I highly suspect that she's only gotten worse with time and is likely up to her eyebrows in filth wherever she is now. <laughs> but for the sake of this story, that should be more than enough context to start us off. Let's pick up shortly after the great breakup after the fall of Wolfbeard, shall we? After Wolfbeard had been cast out of their tiny apartment and wound up back at his parents' house, and well after the engagement had been called off, Miss Piggy realized that she wouldn't be able to afford continuing to live entirely on her own. Because of this, she began to sniff the air for new victims. I mean, potential roommates. <laughs> and that's where Doe comes into play. You see, at the time, Doe had still been living with her folks, and had been butting heads with her mom, as young people often do when they're at that frustrating age of being old enough to leave the nest but not 100% ready to do so. So this made her ripe picking for Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Piggy made quick work of whittling away at poor Doe. She emotionally manipulated her into agreeing to room with her in a new apartment after her lease with the old dump expired. <laughs> However, as time passed, 
Doe became less and less enthusiastic about the idea as the reality of what it meant to live with Miss Piggy truly sank in. <laughs> Come live with me in my filth pile. <laughs> now, mind you, Doe had been around for the initial Wolfbeard shenanigans, but since she would now be rooming with Miss Piggy in the future, she decided it best to at least try and bury the hatchet for the sake of her own sanity. See, Miss Piggy had insisted on staying close friends with Wolfbeard, and that meant that he was going to, unfortunately, still be around her to at least some degree, so attempting to be amicable was necessary. Wolfbeard even made a big deal of apologizing to her for his past behavior. And by this, I mean literally trapping her in her car in the parking lot of a grocery store and circling her like a shark around a diver in a cage. He all but refused to let her leave until she would forgive him. Of course, over the course of the apology, he didn't really own up to anything at all. He simply made excuses, and even more so, blamed Miss Piggy for all of his past behaviors. Wanting the stinking vulture to just stop circling her vehicle, Doe finally relented and gave him the forgiveness that he so desperately wanted. Unfortunately, however, this would only lead to more ordeals in the future. For the remaining time before Miss Piggy's lease was up, it was almost as if Wolfbeard never moved out. He was there so often that it hardly made a difference, except for when I visited, because I made it explicitly clear that I did not want him anywhere on the premises or I would just refuse to come. And to her credit, Miss Piggy did make sure to keep him away for these short windows. However, the same courtesy was not allotted to Doe. Oh no. She, sadly, had to experience far more. And that brings me on to the next deadly sin that corroded Miss Piggy's friendships. Lust. Oh yes, enjoy that mental image. <laughs> Thank you, I won't. <laughs> as per usual, another one on the house. Anyways, horrifying a thought as that is, Miss Piggy never stopped lusting after Wolfbeard. Even when she swore up and down that the two of them were through. That girl even went so far as to claim to be asexual to halt the suspicions of her worried friends. However, thinking back, I'm not sure if it was to ease our worries or simply to gain SPECIAL POINTS. That's sort of a thing that she started constantly going on about like it was super quirky and cute. Despite this, however, she still actively sought relations from Wolfbeard. Doe often questioned her about this as by definition, if Miss Piggy was really ace, then she'd never be the one to actively be trying to convince old Wolfie to bump uglies. <laughs> and when I mean actively trying, I mean it. This woman would straight up go shopping for lingerie and would deadass tell Doe that it was to try and seduce Wolfbeard. Once again, Doe would mention how this probably meant she wasn't ace, but Piggy would always counter with, I have chronic headaches, and I find that endorphins from making love are the only things that help them to go away. Uh, girl, have you ever tried ibuprofen? <laughs> 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 just saying. Also, again, she's still insisting that they're just friends at this point. The levels of desperate that this foolish ass girl went through to try and win back this nasty sack of beard was just... Straight up pathetic. One of these methods was to straight up throw poor Doe under the bus. See, one night, Doe was planning on spending the night over at Piggy's apartment, and to her dismay, Piggy ended up inviting Wolfbeard over as well. Once again, she figured that if she alone couldn't entice him back, some fresh meat ready for slaughter would work nicely. Now, where this gets really uncomfortable is the sleeping arrangement. Now, I'm not sure how it is for dudes, but generally, us ladies don't mind sharing the same bed for sleepovers. We're not weird about it, and it's an extremely common thing for us. However, throw in a big, sweaty, thirsty as fuck neckbeard into the mix, and that whole picture suddenly changes. <laughs> Poor Doe found herself in the worst kind of situation. See, not only was Wolfbeard going to be spending the night at Miss Piggy's, but he also damn well expected to sleep on the bed with both of the girls, too. Fuck that noise, dude. Catch me down at the Super 8 Motel. <laughs> Doe was obviously distressed by the idea, but both Miss Piggy and Wolfbeard 
made her feel bad for questioning it, and eventually she gave in, only with the promise that Miss Piggy would be in the middle so that Doe wouldn't physically be anywhere near Wolfbeard. Wolfbeard agreed to these terms, and the rest of the evening hangout proceeded without issue. However, come bedtime, Wolfbeard seemed to conveniently forget his little agreement. <laughs> <laughs> because he was the first to rush into the bedroom and, of course, plop his fat, sweaty ass directly into the middle of the bed and utterly refuse to move. Jesus Christ, dude, go sleep in the street. <laughs> go wait at an IHOP until morning. This is, this is a bad situation. This meant that poor Doe was stuck next to him all night. And what's worse is that Wolfbeard refused to keep his hands to himself. Ugh. Doe traumatically recalled the event to me, telling me how at one point in the night, where she was fairly certain that he was only pretending to be asleep, Wolfbeard clamped a big sweaty hand into a death grip on the outside of her thigh. She wanted nothing more than to just move it, but she was terrified that if she tried, he'd accidentally move his hand further in his sleep. So out of this fear, she tried to sleep the whole night with that clammy, stinking hand attached to her hip like a confused face hugger. <laughs> but wait, there's more! <laughs> if you thought parading around in lingerie as if it were a normal blouse, or offering up your friend as a sacrificial lamb was as far as this thirsty bitch would go for the sake of her uncontrollable lust, you're dead wrong. I think I'll end this first entry with the horrifying tale of the booty fishing. <laughs> While the last weeks ticked away on the lease at the old apartment, Doe began spending more and more time with Miss Piggy in preparation for becoming roommates. Occasionally, Doe would even bring her along to work. At the time, Doe was a surf processor, which meant that the majority of her work was driving all over Kingdom Come all day long, and every now and then, a little company made it a lot more enjoyable. Well, on this particular day, Miss Piggy had enthusiastically asked if she could tag along. Doe was fine with it and told her to be ready to go by a specific time so she could make all of her serves. Well, the time comes and Doe's waiting in the parking lot with no sign of Miss Piggy. Irritated, she starts texting her, asking what's up and where she is. But the only response that she gets is to wait. Doe is obviously getting more and more irritated as time ticks by that she could have spent driving to a destination, but Piggy insists that she waits, so begrudgingly she does, for nearly 30 minutes. At this point, Doe is livid and ready to leave Miss Piggy behind, but just at this moment, she comes waddling around the corner, out to Doe's car with a mischievous grin on her face. Not caring for what it could be about, Doe snapped at her. What the hell were you doing? We were supposed to leave ages ago! Now we're not going to get back until after dark, Doe shouted. Sorry, <laughs> giggled Miss Piggy, who was clearly not sorry by the tone of her voice. But Wolfbeard called last minute and he needed my help. What could Wolfbeard need help with that's so important that you made me late for work? Doe barked angrily. At this, Piggy's grin only grew larger. He was curious what it felt like to have his prostate stimulated, so he asked me for help. <laughs> the color... <laughs> the color drained from Doe's face as she recalled this. That's right, Miss Piggy held Doe up from going to work so she could snap on a glove and go poking around her just friend's asshole in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse, Miss Piggy announced it as if it was some great joke that clearly Wolfbeard hadn't voided his bowels before the process began. Oh god, I hate it so much. <laughs> I'll let you imagine. <laughs> Needless to say, after all these happenings, as the time of moving into the new apartment with Miss Piggy drew nearer and nearer, Doe began to grow more and more uncomfortable with Wolfbeard's presence. Unfortunately, this would be a losing battle for the next year to come. However, that and many more antics from this lovely pair of beards is yet to come in the next chapter of the Miss Piggy Chronicles. I hope you're enjoying this new series, and I'll catch up with y'all next time. 
And on that note, just typing that last bit out gave me the mighty need for a shower. <laughs> a long shower. So I'll bid you adieu, my dudes. In the meantime, keep those necks clean shaven and those thighs safe from clammy death grips. And I would totally push through if there were more Miss Piggy Chronicles, but unfortunately, this was posted two years ago and seems to be the last sign of life for Madame Macabre. I mean, there are some recent, like, YouTube videos and stuff, but no other beard stories, which makes me quite sad, but maybe this video will renew some interest and people can holler at her and she'll be like, okay, I'm ready now. <laughs> at least, that's what I hope. I'll keep her favorited, keep an eye out. Overall, it is quite a tasty tale if you have an appetite for cringe, <laughs> which I definitely do. Probably the thing that I find most interesting about these two is, like, their childhoods. What happened in their childhood that made them grow up this way, you know? We saw a glimpse into Miss Piggy's backstory. I guess OP didn't know Wolfbeard back then, so we probably won't get much of a glimpse, but we do know that his parents are, like, overly affectionate, won't criticize him for anything. It seems like Miss Piggy's parents just didn't give a shit overall. Dogs running in and out of the house? What's wrong with you? You got indoor dogs, you got outdoor dogs. You can't be both. <laughs> That's just how it works. I feel particularly bad for Doe because, oh my god, how do you even get yourself into these situations? Standing up and just saying, go screw yourself, would be the most effective way. Like, did you really have to subject yourself to sleeping next to a beard? Surely there were options. <laughs> Who cares if they get passive aggressive about it? They're like, oh, I'm so sad, I thought you were going to sleep over. It's like, well, I thought that fucker wasn't going to be here. <laughs> We all thought things, didn't we? Fortunately, OP seems to mostly just be viewing this from afar at this point. <laughs> the interactions are like mostly via dough. Aside from the fucking dishwashing debacle, which again, it's like, grow a spine. <laughs> say the things that you need to say. Eviscerate the beard. If they still want to be your friends afterward, then, I mean, that's up to you. I probably still wouldn't. <laughs> The booty fishing part of the saga is absolutely harrowing as well. <laughs> I'm glad Miss Piggy put on gloves, but like, she doesn't even clean. So where did the gloves come from? <laughs> They're just somewhere in the pile of trash that is her apartment, I guess. <laughs> but I think we all learned a lesson today that butt play is just not as fun as it might seem. <laughs> Next thing you know, your whole house smells like poop. <laughs> that ain't no good. Ah, but I'll tell you what is good, friends. Well, this saga. But also, liking, commenting, and subscribing if you did enjoy the saga. Maybe you could share it around, although I'd start people off with the Wolfbeard saga. Because basically, the entire half of the post is just OP plugging the Wolfbeard stuff. <laughs> Which I don't blame her for, but... Is it isn't once enough. I also hope you'll check out the links in the description. There's some stuff there that wasn't on the splash page from earlier. We got my wife's channel. We got my personal subreddit if you want to share some stories with me. And there's also Patreon. Yes, super important. You're seeing them names on the screen right now. Those are my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. Thank you guys so, so much for helping to support this channel. We are full-time on YouTube, it is official, but as you can probably guess, the content that I make is a little bit on the edgy side, so some stuff does get demonetized, so my patrons really do help me out. If you can support monetarily, that is massively, massively appreciated, but if you can't, don't worry about it too much, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, super important. Touch something, wash your hands all the time. Wash your hands. <laughs> but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Because you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. Always remember that. I'll see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye-bye.